I remember when I was in eighth grade, I was taking a bus to downtown Cleveland, Ohio, where my dad worked. And, um, and like many an eighth grader, my thoughts turned to numbers that added up to 20. And I asked myself, what, how large could two numbers that add up to 20, how large could their product be? In other words, if I had two numbers like 10 and 10, you multiply those to get, they add up to 20, and their product is 100. And I asked myself, can the number, can the product get any larger than that? Can it get bigger than 100? So I said, well, let's see. 9 times 11, those add up to 20. Their product was 99, which was almost 100, but it was shy by 1. Then 8 times 12 is 96. And that was almost 100, but that was shy by 4. Then 7 times 13 is 91. 6 times 14 is 84. 5 times 15 is 75, and so on. And I said, look how far they are from 100. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. And I noticed two things. I noticed, first of all, that it, when you pulled the numbers apart, the product was getting smaller. And how, how far were they from the top number? 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared. I said, wow, that's cool. I wonder if that always works. Well, how do you tell if something always works? You try another example. See if it works there. So I tried another example. Uh, let's say I, I looked at the numbers that added up to 26, like 13 and 13. They multiplied to 169. Then I did 12 times 14. They multiplied to 168. 11 times 15 multiplied to 165. 10 times 16 is 160. And again, the same pattern. Here, the, here we are at 169, and we were down shy by 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. The pattern kept going. And then I had what was probably one of the most creative ideas in my life, which is a shame because it was like 30 years ago. I said, what would have, I said, you could apply this pattern and um, uh, to, to help you square numbers. Like let's say you wanted to square 13. Instead of doing 13 times 13, which is a little hard, instead, Try 10 times 16, which is much easier because of the zero. 10 times 60 is 160, and all you have to add to that is 3 squared to get 169. And that's the, that was the origin of this method. Now, weeks later, I, in, I was in my algebra class, and my, the teacher left an answer on the board as 108 squared. And, uh, and being the, oh, the hyperactive child that I was, I blurted out, well, that's 11,664. She said, why, yes, that's right. How did you do that? And I showed her my method. I said, well, 108 squared. I went down 8 to 100, up 8 to 116, multiplied them together to get 11,600, added the square of 8, which is 64, to get 11,664. And she instantly saw knew the algebra that was going on. She knew what was happening. She asked, him, asked me, do you see why that works? And I said, well, sure. And I brought out pages and pages of examples. You know, it works for big numbers, small numbers, negative numbers, even fractions. Anyway, that was, um, that was, a, that was a pivotal moment for me in my mathematics education because it, um, it was the first time I had figured something out that they were not going to be teaching us in school later on. Even though the method was just using basic algebra, it gave me the excitement to see that there was a lot of creativity and fun in mathematics. And, um, and I guess it's the basis of the mathemagician stuff that I do today.